Hey, Jennifer, thank you for taking the time to have this chat today. Uh, I know that you're involved in some really cool uh, new technologies and, and new trending things that I thought the audience of this podcast would love. So um, just to kick things off, do you mind introducing yourself and, and what it is you are involved in, what, what you're sort of doing on a day-to-day -day basis? Sure. Yeah. First of all, thank you, Adam, so much for having me on. I'm, I, I love NFTs. I love talking about them. So it's always fun. Um, uh, yeah, my name is Jennifer uh, Sudo, and I, let's see, I mean, I'm, right now I work for Evaluate Market, which is like an NFT analyzer site. Um, I have a podcast show uh, called the NFT Catcher Podcast, which we record weekly uh, about NFTs. Um, I'm like super involved in the community. Um, I, uh, I, I was one of the first couple thousand people on NBA Top Shot, joined when they first opened their public beta, and um, uh, been into crypto since 2017. And I've just kind of um, uh, used my ETH to buy NFTs uh, this year and really just kind of have been, um, you know, buying some things that I think have long-term potential and then also like trading my way to get uh, better stuff. But yeah, just super like, you know, deep diving into NFTs and, you know, it's really been, really been fun um, just to kind of uh, connect with everybody in the community and uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And and you have a podcast uh, as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. NFT Catcher podcast. Um, we started it a couple months ago and me and my co-host, uh, Michael Keen, we just, you know, every week we record and we kind of talk about what happened in the week of NFTs, you know, just different, different big, you know, events that have happened. And then we'll also talk about our favorite projects and, you know, new and upcoming projects that we're keeping our eye on. So mm -hmm. very cool. Yeah. That's actually how I found, uh, I, I reached out to you is because I, I, I was just on Twitter browsing like NFT Twitter and uh, I saw someone tweet something. And then I don't know, I ended up stumbling on, on one of your episodes, like listen to it. Mm -hmm. And it's just really cool to hear people talking about this stuff. Cause it's like, a pretty new niche, I suppose, in, in the podcast world. So yeah. um, it, it's nice that you guys kind of get so into it and you stay so current by doing like those weekly kind of summaries and whatnot. Um, but but just to actually dial back a little bit, because I think we just jumped right into NFTs, but like what what exactly is an NFT for, for anyone that's listening that has no idea what the hell we're talking about? Um, an NFT is a non-fungible token. That's what it stands for. So uh, basically, you know, something that's fungible means that it's divisible or it, sorry, not divisible. It's interchangeable. So for example, like if I were to give you a, a $1 bill and you were to give me one back, it doesn't matter. We can trade those all day and it, it will have the same value. Um, but non-fungible means that it's unique. It's like a unique digital asset. And so, um, you know, crypto kitties, uh, being the first ERC 721, um, NFT, they, they kind of coined the term NFT back in 2017. Um, for the first time ever, you were able to kind of like digitally own something, you know, and it's kind of like crypto with a picture attached to it, I guess, right? Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, and, and, you know, these NFTs are, are awesome. You, you know, you can permanently own them. They're on the blockchain. And uh, a lot of them are Ethereum-based um, I, I mentioned NBA Top Shot earlier, that's on the Flow blockchain, which, you know, they built their own blockchain. Um, and so, yeah, I don't know. What, I don't know what more to say, but. Mm -hmm. And now, is. so is it like there's there's Ethereum NFTs, but then there's also other blockchains, like more popular ones coming up now is like Solana or um, I guess even uh, Polygon Matic, I think it is, ha has some, I, I don't know if there's any Ripple ones, but do, do you know like how many sort of blockchain or marketplaces are, are sort of out right now that are popular is, is it mostly just ethereum uh, and solana kind of or like are you aware of any others uh, actually cardano is, is another one coming thinking about it just now yeah ethereum based uh nfts are the most popular um for now although gas fees are you know kind of starting to get high as the market yeah a little ridiculous saturated. yeah yeah so people are turning to solana and um you know uh, on the um also you know the uh, NFTs on the uh, Polygon network because there's no gas fees. And so, you know, people really like that. Um, I've been meaning to look into Solana NFTs, to be honest, but I haven't really, they don't have the best reputation for now. Um, Solana right now is a lot of, um, they'll do like copycats of Ethereum based projects um, and then just like a lot of cash grabs. So, 
you know, it's great if you're, if you're kind of looking to launch a project and you, it's really a quality one, you know, you could really blow everything else out of the water on Solana um, because there's, you know, the competition is, and this is, I hope nobody gets offended, but it's like, you know, there's not too much like competition for like quality projects on Solana right now. Mm -hmm. so. I find a lot of people are, are concerned about getting scammed and stuff. And it seems like there's more scamming and things happening on Solana as well. I mean, there's tons on Ethereum, but like, what advice would you give someone that is just interested in getting into NFTs and like in terms of just protecting themselves, like how to be cautious and whatnot, just because there are so many different ways that people are getting scammed? Yeah, I mean, look, this is kind of the wild, wild west right now. Like, like everybody in the space actually tweeted about this the other day. I was like, pretty much everyone in the NFT space uh, gets rugged at least once, you know, they get wrecked at least once in the space. And um, yeah, right now it's really easy for, you know, teams, anonymous teams too. People are just throwing their money into anything um, to just kind of launch a project. And then as soon as it sell out, sells out, they just kind of disappear. And, um, you know, they, they leave with their millions. <laughs> um, and so, you know, I'm hoping as a result, and, you know, everyone else is kind of hoping too, that it evolves to people kind of raising their standards. Um, and, you know, I, I try not to um, buy from any projects that have fully anonymous teams um, that I feel are just cash grabs. Uh, celebrity projects usually are cash grabs, <laughs> honestly. And um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, honestly, researching the team is the number one thing I would say. You know, if, if the team is fully anonymous, that is a huge red flag, in my opinion, um, especially if it's your first project that you're looking into. I mean, a lot of people are just jumping on these projects that have anonymous teams because they feel like, they can just easily ride the wave and then dump, you know, their NFTs and make some money and leave. They don't actually care about it long term. So you do have to be careful about that. Um, and, you know, if you can really research the team behind it and, you know, if you really feel like they're in it for the long haul, then that's a good sign. Um, I mean, you know, uh, yeah, there's a lot of great projects out there. Um, you know, it, it, of course, you know, it's always a risk. Um, I've definitely, you know, ha hold, you know, a significant amount of projects that are not doing too well, but I also hold, you know, a handful of projects that are doing really, really well. And so it's like, you know, you're not going to hit it right every single time, but um, uh, yeah, it definitely takes, you definitely have to put some skin in the game. It definitely takes money, um, especially if you're, you're trying to uh, play with Ethereum based uh, projects. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I, for new people, I always recommend, you know, don't try to be a trader. Being a trader is actually really hard it takes a lot of skill um, and most people feel like they can trade like oh it's easy to trade well it's not really um, unless you're kind of a little bit more skilled in the in the space so I would really just watch and observe and you know keep your eye on some projects you know check it out see how things go you know when they launch and you know join the discord see what the energy is like you know check on the energy every single day after that check on the prices and you don't even have to buy it, just kind of follow a few projects and then, you know, decide to get your feet wet and, and test one out for yourself and, mm -hmm. you know, see what you think. But, you know, just keep in mind that the money you put in, you know, yeah, it could go to zero. It also could, you know, 10 X, but um, you have to be kind of okay with letting go of um, the outcome. Yeah. That's, that's some pretty good advice in terms of checking the team. I, like I've, I've just started getting involved in NFTs this year. And that's sort of part of the process, like the, the due, diligence, due diligence is like going through the team, uh, checking even like how new is this Twitter page? Like, are there fake uh, followers on this Twitter page or this Instagram right. page? Is there fake engagement? Is there fake bots in the Discord? Like a lot of it is just, I, I find faked and I find like a lot of sympathy plays to the big popular projects. So you get like Board Ape Yacht Club. And then you have all these spin-off eight projects that are just like trying to rely on people's FOMO for the main ape project, you know, and they're just kind of buying into it based on FOMO. So uh, it is a really tricky space. Uh, the, the Ethereum gas fees are just like driving me nuts sometimes. I mean, the past two mint drops I've tried to get into, it's like, I didn't get it. I like I paid a shit ton of gas or tried to, and then I didn't mm -hmm. get it. It was a failed transaction, but I still got charged some gas. It's like, well, yeah, you crazy. lose your gas because you're paying for the transaction to go through. So you know, mm -hmm. you can't, you don't get the money back. Yeah. And I, you know, I like to just kind of buy on the secondary market after things sell out, because oftentimes if a project is super hyped, you'll end up paying more in gas than you are for the actual NFT. But yeah. usually people will play like the mint lottery game. So they'll try to mint a bunch, especially like these whales, they'll try to mint a bunch. And then what they'll do is they're just trying to get the rare ones. So they'll end up dumping their other ones 
for like less than it costs to mint them. And, and so, you know, if you really believe in the project, you're better off just going onto the secondary market. You know, usually that's OpenSea and, um, you know, just buying on the secondary if you really believe in it. And usually you can pay a lot less and you can kind of cherry pick what you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes sense. OpenSea is a bit more reliable in that sense. And you can kind of be more chill about like when you're getting it to avoid high gas fees. I've just had like terrible experiences with drops, like a handful of them recently. I think it was um, like all the big ones like Mechaverse, although Mechaverse was okay with their like weird raffle system. But even that like is mm -hmm. kind of sketchy. Like a bunch of it seems very sketchy. And like I, I sort of work in the tech space on like a day to day basis. And we, we have NFT projects and we're building a marketplace for a client. And uh, it just seems like a, a lot of behind the scenes stuff that we don't even know about. Like I, there was one mint that happened, I think it was this week, it might've been Metasource or something. And it was like, some people had like backdoor access to mint prior to other people on the public mint. So it's like hmm. just these weird scenarios. Like I hear like people, like the, the people that are only own the projects are giving their friends backdoor access or celebrities, just like preferential treatment to, to mint before everyone else. So and, and I do see a lot of that, like the whales just like buying things up and then just dropping them as well. So it's, it's so, it's, it's exactly like what you said. It's like the wild, wild west. So I, that's why I kind of thought it'd be cool to have this type of conversation, even on this kind of platform and podcast, because it's like people are going to learn more and more about NFTs as time goes on. But it's like, I, I think such a small fraction of that whole space is, is like honest and and truthful at this at this point so it's like trying to weed out all the all the crap and really just help people not get scammed because i mean i'm sure you've seen it like the amount of people that just like send random uh, people ethereum like for no reason or or give them their like seed phrase for their logins and stuff it's like i don't understand how people are getting like duped like that but you know so hopefully conversations like this help in, in that in that regard like people such as yourself because you're you even said like a lot of people just get rug pulled when they'll, they'll buy something, which, which essentially means like, like the price will just drop as soon as they buy it. Like even people like there was one Solana project recently. I think the guy, when he did the reveal, it was just a bunch of random emojis. So he just straight up like took everyone's money and <laughs> revealed them like nothing. And then he just disappeared and deleted all the accounts. So it's like, it's nuts what's happening. So um, have you, yeah, what, what projects are you in right now that are like the really like the big ones that you were talking about? Um, I, I have a cool cat um, that I had bought for 0.6 months ago okay. and it really took a lot for me to pull the trigger. Now the floor is like nine ETH and I'm just like, mm. oh my God, <laughs> I'm just like holding on you. I'm actually wearing my cool cats merch right now. Oh, nice. Nice. I just got my hoodie in. Are, are um, those behind you, those two paintings, are they NFTs as well that you printed? No, they're not. This is oh, from okay. Etsy. She has Bitcoin glasses, although I should get one with Ethereum. Um, uh -huh. I got that before I was in NFTs. And then this is from an artist. I told her she should make NFTs. She ignored my message. I think she's probably, I don't know, maybe she's against NFTs or something. But <laughs> okay. But yeah, I just like, uh, I like physical art too. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I have that. And I think it just adds to the video, you know. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, actually, um, my wife, she got an, a Cardano NFT and then she printed it on like a huge, um, can canvas, just like that yes. one behind you. Uh, and, and yeah, I thought it was like really cool to see that, like, I don't know, taking something digital and, and making it physical in that way, especially cause it's an NFT and, uh, she did it on Cardano, which was like her first Cardano mint. And it was just like such a weird process when I was watching her versus the Ethereum one. Like, it's like, you've got to use different wallets and stuff and different marketplaces mm -hmm. and the Cardano mm -hmm. ones are kind of not the greatest marketplaces right now. So yeah, that's like ultra wild west getting into that. Yeah. Market, I haven't so. gotten into any Cardano NFTs. Um, I mean, you know, I, I like to kind of, I'm open-minded, you know, I like to research different ones, but I just haven't made the time, but I, I definitely should. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So what inspired you to do uh, like a podcast around NFTs? So I um, actually have a YouTube channel for NBA Top Shot and I would do uh, weekly update videos about what's happening in the week on NBA Top Shot. And I, I grew pretty quickly kind of, I mean, you know, it's a small, it's a small niche, but um, a lot of people, you know, subscribed to me and liked watching my videos. And then I started getting into, you know, other NFTs besides NBA Top Shot. Um, and I was like, you know what, I would love to, you know, just be able to talk about this more. And um and so I kind of, I think I tweeted out like, oh, I want to start a podcast, you know, about NFTs. And um, this guy, which is who's my co-host now, Michael Keane, he reached out to me and he was like, 
hey, you know, I saw that you said you wanted to start a podcast. I wanted to start one too. And, you know, I, you know, I think we would be great co-hosts. And I didn't even really know the guy. I think I follow, I think we followed each other, but I didn't really know him. So like we set up a Zoom meeting. I was just like, hmm, you know, I was kind of a little skeptical, but I was like, all right, let's see, you know, how it is. And um, I mean, you know, we uh, we decided to just, you know, shoot for, for once a week. And I was like, honestly, I'd be down as long as all I have to do is show up, talk, and that's it. And he's like, yeah, like I'll get my buddy to like produce it and, you know, all that. And um, and he always like provides notes before the podcast on like what, you know, an outline of what we should talk about. And then I'll add a few things here and there. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. so yeah, he just kind of reached out to me and I was like, you know what? Yeah. Like why not? So, and yeah. now we have like, I think we just posted our 12th episode yesterday and we have like 15,000 downloads, which I think is kind of crazy. I'm just like, oh my God, everyone's like listening in. Cause you know, there's not too many, uh, NFT podcasts. So it's, it's, it's yeah. Really awesome. Yeah. That's, that's the crazy thing is like how, how fast you can grow in the space in, in that niche, because there's just not much available. Like that's, that's how mm-hmm. I found you guys. It's like, I I've, I try to find like those type of podcasts and it's, it's just not really. And I suppose it's cause you have a producer that's helping you too, but it's just not well put together a lot of them, but yours is actually, mm-hmm. it seems well put together and well planned out or well thought out. So it makes sense okay. what you just said. Um, and yeah, I'm really enjoying it too, just because a lot of, like, I don't really know that many people that talk NFT stuff. So it's like, right. I, do you have a lot of like close friends that you've grown up with or anything that know about NFTs? Like for me, it's like, no one knows what the hell any, any of that stuff is. So it's just tricky. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I move every year, so I, um, I don't really keep in contact with too many people, but, um, my family, like I, I, you know, I introduced them to NFTs and, you know, I got my mom to set up a wallet. I bought her um, an Avastar nice. actually for Christmas. Um, and um, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I tell my family about NFTs and stuff and they're, they're open-minded and they're willing to like learn and, and hear about it. So um, I haven't really gotten people that are like, oh, that's a scam, which I hear other people saying that, you know, people are telling them that they need to be careful and stuff. Nobody's really said that to me. I mean, I don't usually go out and tell people about it unless they kind of like ask like what I'm doing or something like that. So Mm-hmm. Well, do you find like when people ask what you're doing, you tell them that they're just like they if you say NFTs, like for the most part, they don't know what you're talking about. Like, is it do you find it's yeah. widely known? Um, I mean, some people have heard of it. They're like, oh, yeah, I've heard of it. Like or, or you know, they're like, no, what's that? And then you kind of explain a little, you know, you know, I don't say too much. I just say a little bit. And then if they're like they want to kind of know more then yeah, I'll, you know, I'll take the time to, to sit down with somebody if they're interested in and kind of walk them through stuff and show things to them. But usually people aren't like, you know, too interested in wanting to know like too much, um, you know, but mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, it is interesting. Mm-hmm. Is, is it like sort of ties in with the crypto thing too? I suppose that's like their entryway to, to understanding what NFTs are, because I guess more people mm-hmm. know about crypto now. So then they hear NFTs and they're just like, oh, is that that crypto thing? So yeah, I don't know. Do you think that there'll ever be, and maybe there is, but there are like NFTs for, for around Bitcoin because it seems there are like- there are some NFTs on the Bitcoin. Uh, okay. So it's interesting because it, I don't know. It's kind of complicated and weird, but basically, there's uh, the most popular NFT on Bitcoin is uh, rare Pepes. Rare Pepes, and I have like two Rare Pepes actually from Series One. It's really complicated. There's like a ton of them and. Um, I don't know, you have to go through like counterparty or whatever and buy them with like this certain um, uh, token and then, or you can just buy them on Ethereum, but you kind of pay a premium, uh, but yeah, or on OpenSea, sorry, but it's um, it's a little complicated, but they are the most popular ones. There's like the Nakamoto uh, Rare Pepe that's like the most popular. I think there's only a hundred, I want to say, and uh, uh, those are going for a lot. Like I think one sold for a hundred ETH. Um, but uh, yeah, that's not really popular. Um, Bitcoin NFTs. There, mm-hmm. There's only a couple on uh, Bitcoin. Why do you think that is? From 20 and Rare Pepes is from 2016. Uh. So um, I don't really know. You know, I'm not a huge technical person. I'm not really 100% sure about that. Why or you know what you know what mm. that entails. Um, but yeah, I just yeah. Know it seems like there there would be more, but it, for some reason, like Ethereum just took off and. I mean, do you, you know how the transaction fees are on, on the Bitcoin ones? Like, is it is it just as crazy as Ethereum gas? If you're buying, uh, so like uh, people wrap them, if you wrap something, you can, um, you know, wrap it and, and then, you know, have it displayed on OpenSea. And so 
it's going to be the same thing. Like, you know, anything you buy on OpenSea, like if you're paying with Ethereum, it's going to be the same as far as gas fees go. So yeah, it's the same thing. I don't know if you buy directly from um, Counterparty or whatever it's on, but I don't, yeah, I don't know how that works, but um, mm-hmm. yeah, if it's, if, if you're buying from OpenSea, it's just going to be the same thing. Mm. And so where do you think NFTs are going in, in the next like year or so? Like I, I'm seeing a lot of um, in the direction of people trying to integrate AR, like augmented reality uh, or do more gaming stuff. Mm-hmm. A lot of people are going in the direction of like having investment funds where they'll acquire like cool cats or, you know, other stuff and then distribute that to a community wallet and stuff. Like, do you think that like, I guess where, where do you think they're going to go in the next year in the sense of like, are they going to stay in, in doing in these different directions or is there going to be something entirely unique that comes out that you can think of or you've thought of? I think, you know, right now we're kind of in the profile picture phase, you know, and, and it's fun and it's really fun. And, you know, it's mostly just based around um, your online identity, uh, basically. And, but I think it'll evolve, you know, I I don't think um, these profile picture projects are going to be, you know, um, you know, the, the thing that we're all doing in a year or two from now, I don't know. I mean, they'll definitely be, you know, a decent amount that survive and that'll, still be around but it's like i think that it'll evolve to um membership based stuff so for example what if your gym membership was an nft and then if you wanted to cancel you just sell your gym membership and it's super easy like just things like that um or you know maybe maybe um there's like uh i don't know like a rush gary v actually said that he's coming out with a restaurant uh the first like nft restaurant where basically your NFT will act as a membership to the restaurant. Um, and that's coming out in 2023. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see how people kind of innovate their way through this and, you know, um, uh, do different things. Gaming NFTs will be huge because, you know, you're, you play video games now, you'll buy these, like, for example, Fortnite skins, right? You'll buy Fortnite skins. I don't even play Fortnite, but I just know people pay money on there uh, for their characters to look good or whatever. And you don't actually, you don't, actually own those like you don't get to move them onto a different platform you know they stay on that platform and and you know let's say uh the next game comes out well you know your sol like you don't get to move your stuff and or anything like that you don't get to sell it nothing you just buy and that's it but you know being able to actually digitally own you know these skins would be so awesome and then you can move them to different platforms and do different things with them and stuff and you know you can buy sell trade them I've been playing this game, Gods and Change, for the past, um, hmm, maybe it's been a year. Um, and, you know, it's, I think I'm kind of betting on it, um, you know, for NFT gaming. And I play it. And what's cool about it is, you know, basically it's like a game like Hearthstone. And basically, you, you, you know, you'll play the game, you'll build a deck, you'll play the game. As you gain experience, you'll unlock these chests, which have cards in them. If you get duplicates, you can fuse the two together and it actually makes it into an NFT. Um, and so they actually built their own, uh, layer two solution because gas fees were so high. And so they actually created immutable X, which is what the, that those, uh, TikTok NFTs are on now, immutable X. So it's kind of like, oh shoot, like, you know, gods and chain created immutable X and now they're, you know, doing these big things, immutable X. And so I'm kind of like, I feel like, you know, gods and chain is kind of underrated in that way. Um, because basically you haven't been able to fuse cards since I've been playing, you haven't been able to fuse cards and make NFTs. So I'm just kind of like accumulating cards and just kind of waiting, but it's cool because then you'll actually be able to own those. And then, you know, maybe someone else wanted a card uh, for their deck and they can just buy it, you know, and you can sell it. So um, I just think that's super cool. I think, yeah, gaming is definitely going to be huge and, um, you know, Gods and Chain has been around for a couple of years. I mean, that's just one example. Obviously, there's like Axie Infinity and everything, although I don't think that's particularly that fun um, of a game. Like, it's Yeah, not I did like... see that one. Yeah, what what kind of game is that? Like, I, I briefly looked into it and I was like, why are the sales? I think that's why. I was like, why are the sales so high on this thing? I saw it like on some of those crypto and NFT sites, but what what is that game exactly? I mean, I haven't really looked too much into Axie Infinity, but uh, basically, if you live in like the... Th- the Philippines or something, you can make a living playing uh, Axie Infinity and earning um, SLP, Smooth Love Potion. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I, I mean, and you can sell your Axies and buy them and stuff. My sister bought a team for like 0.6 ETH 
she doesn't even play it. She mm-hmm. kind of like forgot about it, uh-huh. but um, she still has her axes. But yeah, no, I mean, and, and, you know, some people have been kind of been like, well, that game's not even fun. People are just playing it to make money. And, you know, it's like, it would be nice to have, you know, more games come out where it's like, people aren't just making it to make money. They're actually making it to play it. And they mm-hmm. find it very, you know, fun that, you know, that's what it should be. So Yeah, yeah. Like not focusing so much on, on just the cash grab aspect of it, but like, yeah, running like a sustainable project and planning to grow it and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm not seeing too much of that. It's mostly cash grabs right now anyways, like from what I'm noticing. But uh, actually, there's one NFT I just got earlier this week. I think it's called Ribbit. And the only reason I got it was because the roadmap was like this kid who's like phase one was uh, no frog NFTs. Phase two was like frog NFTs. And then phase three was that he was going to buy a real frog and live stream it to a Discord server 24-7. So I was like, that's an awesome roadmap. I love that. So like, I was on board right away. So now like we could see this like live streaming frog in this, in this discord. I think he's going to get a little frog girlfriend soon. So he's just like <laughs> streaming at 24 seven. I was like, this is the most honest, stupid project that I've seen in a while, but at least it's not like yeah. people in the discord were like, this is a rug pull. This is a rug pull. We're like, uh, how is this a rug pull as far as i can tell the roadmap has been achieved and this is amazing we can see this frog 24 right. 7 so i don't know projects like that are kind of like fun and, and cute in that sense i think it was like a younger kid too that did it but hmm. i'm seeing so many like just I, I think you guys were talking about it on um you you and your co-host of your podcast like just these these companies that roll out like project after project after project and they just move on to the next one afterwards like just yeah. constantly trying to get that cash grab and then move on to the next, not really try to build a long-term community. So like, what, what do you think really adds value to a community? Like what makes a board eight yacht club kind of community or, or a crypto punk kind of community? I mean, crypto punks were just the first 10 K generative avatar projects. You know, they were free to claim back in 2017. Uh, they're an ERC 20. They like people just, that's just historical. So, you know, Larva Labs isn't even really doing anything for the community. Yeah, they came out with MeBits, um, but they're literally just like, it's just the fact that it's historical and it's kind of just become like a store of value. I almost think of it as like Bitcoin, you know, like if you're thinking mm-hmm. about it in terms of cryptocurrency, it's like- Is that like they're calling it like blue chip or whatever? It's like blue chip, blue yeah, chip. blue chip NFTs. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. I mean, CryptoPunks would be like the blue chip NFT. Mm. Um yeah, like a safe bet. Um, and, you know, Board Ape Yacht Club, you know, it only came out this year. It's only been, you know, I don't know, when did it come out? April, May. So it's only been maybe half a year or so. So you can't really call it a blue chip. It hasn't been through winter, you know. Um, but I mean, I'd say Board Ape Yacht Club is definitely a blue chip potential. And um, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I think that um, really the community just, that cultivated from the board ape yacht club i mean you know there's board apes putting together a board ape podcast you know there my sister was just mc for this uh board ape yacht club uh, basketball tournament over in cali um and like they're just doing a lot of community things you know nft nyc is coming up they're doing a whole festival they're doing a yacht club party um and uh so i don't know they're just really um the community is really loyal um and And uh, they kind of, it was, it was one of those things where it was like right place, right time. They, they just came out at the right time. And and I think a lot of people kind of latched on because they just felt like they liked them and they wanted to, they just, um, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I I don't have a name myself, but um, yeah, the community is really strong. Mm -hmm. Do you, do you get that feel from the cool cats community? Yeah, I feel like the Cool Cats um, community is 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 pretty strong as well. And, you know, Klon being an artist, you know, for the last however many years, he's, you know, been drawing these Cool Cats for the past 10 years, basically. And, you know, I, I, I think that's a huge seller. You know, Bored Apes, you know, I don't really know anything about like the artists, like his story and stuff, but I feel like you know, uh, people get sold by like stories and emotion. And I feel like Klon being an actual artist, like really he was drawing these cats for 10 years, you know, is really awesome. And, um, and, and, you know, they came out the gate 
Uh, I think they were 0.05 to um, mint and then they weren't selling out. So they lowered it to 0.02 because the community is like, you should lower the price. You should lower the price. So they lowered it to 0.02. Came out on my birthday, July 1st. My friend bought one for me, minted one for me. Um, I ended up selling it for 0.44. Hmm. And, uh, but then I ended up buying back in at 0.6. But um, because I, I, I really did feel like, oh, you know what? I really do believe in this project and I feel like it has a lot of potential. Um, and I liked that they were... Um, you know, kind of saying that they were going to do monthly airdrops. I'm a sucker for free gifts. So I love that. And um, I just, you know, I, I thought it was really cool. I, yeah, I just felt, you know, it was my intuition. I don't know. But mm. yeah, Cool Cats, I'm, definitely. I'm finding it's like a lot of spinoffs of Cool Cats, just like how there are spinoffs of 48 Yacht Club. Like the, there's Mutant Cats now, which uh, I don't know if you've seen those, but they're, they look very much like the Cool Cats. And then part of mutant cat strategy is to like, like a buddy of mine just acquired one for, I think 1.5 or something like that. ETH. And, and when I, when he told me that, I was like, what was that like five grand for one of these like mutant cats or just like a yeah. spin off of, of a cool cat, but like the mutant cat community acquired or they bought um, 11 cool cats for their like community wallet or whatever. And they actually just bought a crypto punk last night. So Okay. I don't know. These these projects are really interesting to see like the spin-offs also being successful. So I, I just got the vibe of like Board Ape Yacht Club kind of has a ton of ape spin-offs and Cool Cats has like cat spin-offs. So they're very like similar. Do you think the Cool Cat floor is just going to keep going up? Because that's it's just what it seems like. I mean, you know, um, we don't really know. I do know that they're coming out with their companions soon. And of course, you know, the price will I do think the price will go up as a result, you know, it's usually how it is. And then it'll drop after the companions come out, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know because the price of Ethereum is going up. And so um, people, you know, the, people have different uh, opinions on what they think that'll mean for NFTs. You know, if, if the price of Ethereum goes to 8K, you know, what does that mean for NFTs? Will it adjust based on the USD price? You know, is one ETH, does one ETH equal one ETH? I mean, you know, what's going to be the situation? I think for the crypto native people that already have Ethereum that aren't really looking to sell, it's going to be a great time for them because they'll be able to, you know, buy things that are, you know, a lot less in terms of ETH, um, you know, but a lot of people come to the space and they are actually spending their USD, uh, their US dollar, you know, to, to, to buy these NFTs. So, I think that, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely see, I think we'll see prices dip if the price of ETH, you know, really goes up. So I don't know if, you know, cool cats will, you know, be 40 mm -hmm. ETH or something, you know, and I don't know, I'm not really sure. Um, I'm trying to figure out what to do myself with my one. I'm like, do I sell before the companion and try to buy back after? Is that too risky? Um, because I'm trying to lock in some profits. I really haven't taken any profits on my uh, mm -hmm. Ethereum based on And NFT you could like yet, roll so. that into other projects too, right? Like you could just, you could take that, sell it off and then get into a handful of other projects with that. Yeah, but I want, but it's like, it's hard because it's like, I want to have my cool cat. Like I want mm -hmm. my cool cat. That's my most valuable Ethereum based uh, NFT that I have. So I'm just mm -hmm. like, I want it. But I know it's it's hard to let go, even though it's like, you look at it and I'm like, $35,000, you know, like, what the heck, this is a lot, but it's just weird how you feel, you know, so emotionally attached. And I think that is, it's, you know, it's easier to spend uh, crypto because it's, you're not attached to it, you know, it's just like a right. number, I guess. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, uh, you know, these NFTs, it's like, they're, there's something else, you know, there's an image attached to it. Right, so right. It's different. It's great. I find it creates a lot more like, people that are holding these nfts because it's not like holding like holding crypto seems to me like a little bit more boring than holding an nft it's like boring, if yeah. i if i have like ethereum i just kind of want to like put it into an nft or put it into different nfts because i'm just like it's just boring to hold this ethereum and just let it accumulate i just like rather just buy cool art whether it goes up or down especially if i like the style of the art and just like i don't know i'd rather hold that i suppose so do you feel it's a little riskier way? as well, but um, yeah. yeah, I mean, I when I first started out, you know, I had bought um, Ethereum in 2017 and I just held onto it and I didn't do anything with it. I was just like, you know, I'm thinking about this as like a store of value and I'm just going to keep it. Mm -hmm. um, and so I didn't, you know, I was in the NBA Top Shot and, um, you know, you can use Fiat for that. So 
you know, I was just, you know, really into that and I was early and, you know, doing well with that. And then, um, and then, you know, these Ethereum based projects started coming out and I was like, man, you know, I, I, maybe I should spend some of my Ethereum, you know, that I have. And it was hard because I didn't want to spend my Ethereum. I wanted to keep it. But um, I uh, actually, it was my sister who really inspired me. And also um, uh, Kylo, who has like one of the biggest in like the top 25 largest accounts on NBA Top Shot, who was like, you know, uh, at first I was, I, I, you know, bought NFTs because I was kind of just money motivated because he's like, it's a good way to multiply your ETH. And I was like, okay, let me try. And, um, but then I just started, you know, really getting into NFTs and I'm like, you know, I like having NFTs. And, and so I think, you know, maybe, maybe a lot of other people kind of get in the same way where they're like, oh, let me just use this to make money. And then they really kind of fall in love with the space and, you know, everything happening with it. Mm -hmm. so, that's kind of, that's, yeah, that's the way I am. Like I originally, I thought about it from the money perspective and I was like, well, it's just like, I don't know, it's kind of fun holding these random things, especially like depending on the roadmap, like that frog one I just mentioned, is just like so random, but it's like, I, I support how random that is. So um, yeah, some of them are really interesting. And, and you mentioned actually that Gary V uh, restaurant one um, as well. And I, I saw that he, he made some posts about it and it seemed mm -hmm. kind of interesting, like that it could go in the direction of like exclusive memberships to get access to stuff. So, and, and that it would be like transferable in that way. So it, it's pretty neat. Um, do you think that it's going to go in the, well, well, actually one question more on the Gary V side, like uh, today I was actually noticing on his open C, he has a bunch of like fake, um, projects listed, which is kind of weird. So what are your thoughts about that? Like just the, that influencers in a way it's almost, I don't know if he did it intentionally, but like, it's, it's fake really projects weird. Listed? Well, it could be that people sent, so like people send and people will send stuff to my wallet too you okay. know on the on the uh, uh on the polygon network it's free to just like send like all these like it's like kind of like getting spam email so you'll uh -huh. just get and especially these big wallets like gary v they'll just get nfts that are just junk mail basically and so and and if you know there's more than one of it um and someone like lists it then it'll kind of make it seem like he has it listed, even though it's not actually him. It's just that someone else that owns that as well, you know, if there's more than one quantity mm -hmm. of it, uh, has listed it. So, um, yeah, people probably just, you know, spend, send a ton of, you know, NFTs to his wallet and make it appear that he bought them, but you can look through the history and that's, what's great about, you know, the blockchain and everything being transparent is that you can actually see, you know, who bought this, you know, was it minted? And people will mint things to people's wallet too and make it seem like they minted them. Mm -hmm. So, but I love that, you know, the transparency of the blockchain is that you can see everything. So that's really nice. Yeah. And um, yeah, so it's like, you know, you know, did he actually buy it, you know, or, yeah, or what? Yeah. But people I get saw that and I was that. like, it's so weird. Um, yeah. Another thing that's kind of sketchy and you, you probably see it too, but like people will basically transfer things to their own wallet or like sell it to their own wallet. Like, and sometimes they'll sell, like maybe they'll buy an NFT, sell it for 10 ETH and then relist it for like four ETH. And then to the like just average person looking at it, they think that, you know, it's sold for 10 and now the person's taking a loss, but really they just transferred it to themselves. Like, do you see that happening a lot? And, and, and that's just sort of another way that people are kind of getting scammed in a way. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of like, you know, wash trading and stuff going on. I'm sure, you know, I mean, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of sketchy stuff happening in the space as well. But, you know, that's just kind of uh, the decentralized aspect of things, you know, um, so. Because yeah. it is transparent on the blockchain in that way, like what you're saying, but it, it, it also isn't because they're kind of like anonymous random accounts that people could just throw up and then and do that kind of wash trading approach it that's just getting back to the whole wild west thing it's just like i i see that sometimes and i, I it it kind of throws me off about like yeah. the integrity of it yeah yeah i mean um uh, but you know people kind of police each other in the space as well and they'll call out wallets that are doing things like, like i've seen that too things. yeah people love to call <laughs> call out a different stuff yeah. what, what are your thoughts on how twitter's uh what the direction they're going now with like doing the verification or was it like profile photo verification if you because if, a lot of people are like taking nfts that they don't own and just throwing it up in their profile so do you have any like insight into that stuff 
Yeah, I saw uh, who was it? Justin Taylor, I believe his name is, um, who works for Twitter, had kind yeah. of like sent like a um, had had posted about that. And yeah, that's interesting. Basically, you would be able to um, verify that the NFT in your profile picture is yours. And I believe it has to come from a verified project as well. Um, but yeah, you can uh, verify that it's legit. We don't know when that's going to come out, but that would be awesome. Yeah, there's definitely, you know, a handful of people in the space that are just, you know, making, you know, right click saving and making, you know, someone else's NFT their profile picture because people don't really know the difference. And, um, you know, unless you go and confirm and check their wallet and see who really owns it and stuff. Yeah. So, you know, things will, things will start to come out. It's kind of like you have to kind of um, naturally, you know, push the limits and, you know, do all these crazy things. Like people naturally have to just kind of um, test the limits on things for, for there to then, okay, things to evolve and things to happen from there. But Twitter is like a great place you know, in the NFT space, that's where everyone is on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Everyone's yeah. on Twitter. Um, you know, if you're into NFTs and you're not on Twitter, you're honestly missing out because uh, a lot of stuff's happening. They're always, you know, people are always hosting Twitter spaces. They just launched this um, NFT communities thing. And actually the, uh, this, no, not NFT communities. It's just Twitter communities, it's called. Okay. And um, so certain people have access to it. And the, there's this NFT one that's literally, it became the largest community. So it's like, the, the community of the NFT community on Twitter is such a strong community. And um, yeah, it's just, it's really awesome to see, honestly. But it also feels like a tight knit community as well. And it also feels like everyone kind of knows each other in the space. Like, I it feel like weird. I know yeah. a lot of people in the space, you know. Um, I don't know. It's just like, it's a cool feeling, you know, feeling like you know everyone, like everyone kind of knows each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you all share this, like, sort of similar similar interest in, in that space and I, it's actually true like I used to use Twitter for like business kind of tweets or technology kind of tweeting and stuff like that and then I completely like cleared out my Twitter of all that and now it's just NFT stuff so it's like yeah, I pretty much went on this year I was like oh so Twitter has turned full NFT at this point so like you know and, and stocks it's like stocks and trading NFTs and crypto so those are two awesome ways and I think Twitter like doing this integration i did see like that that twitter marketing guy um making an announcement or whatever but I, I think there are good people to lead in that direction i think they were working with stripe or something like that in order to, to have this integration work um so yeah I'm, I'm just super excited to see it like sort of evolve more and more and get it get part of these big platforms and um yeah yeah i, I think facebook's coming out with an nft or something like that aren't they oh god i don't want to buy any facebook NFTs. yeah like I, I think like when facebook comes out with stuff everyone just kind of rolls their eyes but like they're so big that people will <laughs> yeah. still get involved and buy it so it's like whatever twitter came out there on nfts and they gave them to people for free and then those things were selling for like dozens of eth on the really? secondary I didn't yeah mean, when was my this? friend got one uh it was mo uh, months ago actually oh months ago yeah wow I feel like I miss out on so much stuff because it ha it moves so fast that like people tell me like there's this project that dropped and or whatever and <laughs> Twitter's doing this. It's you like, can't keep up with, with everything. There's so much. There, yeah, there's always so much going on. Yeah, it's, it's almost like a full time job to to do <laughs> NFTs. Like I see a lot of people. They're like, I quit my job to do NFTs. <laughs> I was mm -hmm. like, all right, I guess. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, a lot of people are quitting their jobs uh, to to basically be NFT traders full-time, but it's also really fun to just work in the NFT space. You know, like I have a full-time job in the NFT space. So it feels, you know, it's nice because it's like, I want I want to be in this space so much. And then it's also like my job, you know, mm -hmm. I do social and marketing for evaluate markets. So it's like, it's fun. Cause it's like, you know, you're still kind of having like a secure income source, you know, but you're still going to be in the space. And I, I would recommend, you know, people trying to do that. There's a lot of um, I was literally just making YouTube videos about NBA Top Shot and then they reached out to me and they're like, you know, it's hard to find people that know NFTs and social media. So mm. it was like, they were just like, hey, like, do you want to work for us? So, you know, putting yourself out there, companies will start re reaching out to you. Um, you know, I mean, yeah, you can do your own thing too, but it's kind of cool also working in the space.
Yeah, that's like you're following your passion and then it aligns to what's also going to like pay you. And it just it just like becomes this awesome. Yeah. And then you don't feel the need to like, oh, my God, I have to, you know, make money off my NFTs. Like, I don't feel pressure to have to like sell my stuff to pay the bills. It's like I can, you know, I have the freedom to be able to like hold on to them and stuff like that, you know. Um, So that yeah, that's kind of nice. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So are there any uh, projects right now that you're kind of watching and just waiting to get in on? I think I, I, I listened to the episode you just not the one you just have but one before that and you mentioned Gen X and I looked into that one actually. Um, mm-hmm. It looks kind of interesting because I was actually trying to get the BYO pill and Ooh, the key love those, uh, but yeah. then all of a sudden it's like overnight it shot up. <laughs> I was like whoa like I was just watching it. The and combined then it, like, is like doubled. one ETH, yeah. Yeah, so it's like, shoot, okay, well, uh, it's, and then I heard you mention the Gen X guys, and I was like, oh, this seems like it's in a similar direction, but they're a little bit more behind. Um, are you still in, like, with, with that project, do you still have NFTs? Yeah, so um, House of Kiba is interesting. I do kind of feel like it's a sleeper. They came out with their Genesis membership uh, months ago, and uh-huh. they had actually said, you know, they were the first uh team to really promise like monthly airdrops for life type of thing which was kind of revolutionary at the time and and so they came out with ten thousand of them but they came out with them on the polygon network so it was a little more complicated um for people and anyway you could either you could either pay 500 usd or uh however point whatever ETH, you know, and uh, on the Polygon network. And so I remember just kind of passing it up, even though I knew the founder, I should have freaking bought one, but I didn't. And, um, and so they said, oh, they were going to have 10,000. And there was like several weeks to mint and however many didn't sell, they were going to burn. And so, and so, uh, and there would never be another like Genesis membership again. Right. And so only 810 sold and Mm. they burnt the rest. And so, there's only 810 of those Genesis ones. And then they started really, you know, coming out with these uh, quality um, airdrops. They're building out their own metaverse, actually. And, um, and so they, they're airdropping these armor pieces and stuff. Um, and, you know, I ended up buying at why I pulled the trigger at one ETH uh, for a house keeper membership. And um, uh, now I think it's going for a couple ETH or something. But um, then, you know, they decided, you know, we want to kind of let more people in to our uh, project, you know, cause you know, first time around didn't go too well, but a lot of people are now interested, but it's like kind of a higher price point. So they came out with like a second tier membership, which are these gen X's. And so they, I think they, and you know, I love them. So no offense to them, but they kind of lack in the marketing aspect of it where they're not uh, doing a great job, like um, putting out teasers and promotions and kind of really getting the word out. They need to work on that. Um, which is, but that's not like the worst problem because they're working a lot behind the scenes um, and all that. And so, and I don't know if this is public knowledge or yet or not yet, but they are uh, going public as well. So they're like, you know, they're funded and everything, which is really cool. Um, But yeah, so it's like a second tier membership. The floor is like 0.1, which those Mm -hmm. things minted for 0.2. So they're literally like 50% off mint price. I have five myself. Um, I uh, bought one for my mom actually. And um, yeah, I I do kind of feel like that's kind of a sleeper project. You know, do I think it'll pump in the, you know, pump, you know, a ton in the next couple of weeks? Probably not. I think it's a sleeper, but I think it's, I think they'll start delivering and then people will realize, oh, shoot, like this is actually really cool. And you're also going to be able to fight them and yours could die. And then you can like, I don't know. It's really interesting. Like they're, they're kind of doing yeah. it. With it but How does that work? Like, do you lose it? Like, is it, is it burned? If I guess the person it? who wins when you fight them gets it or whatever. Okay. Hmm. So I don't know. They kind of, le- they leaked that on a Twitter spaces. I guess they weren't supposed to say it, but hmm. um yeah, so I don't know. I, I, yeah, that's an interesting project. Um, another one that I'm, I'm actually just watching the price right now. Uh, Relentless. So actually, it's called Relentless, but it's um. Do you know uh, Tom Bilio from uh, Impact Theory? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He came out with his own NFT, and uh, he came out with three different tiers. There's like a legendary heroic and then Relentless is the other one. And so I'm watching the Relentless one. It's kind of a Dutch auction. Um, it's not even really selling out. It's, it's not one of those projects that you can just quickly flip, which is why I don't think it, 
uh, sold out super quick. But right now, um, you can get like their cheapest one for 0.08. There's still 4K available of those keys. So I'm kind of waiting to see, you know, kind of what it goes to and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I want to get one um, because I feel like Tom Bilio, you know, he's the founder of Quest Nutrition, which he, Michael said he sold it for a billion dollars, I believe. And so he's not going anywhere. You know, everyone knows who he is. He's a public person. He's not going to just rug pull. I do believe he's going to deliver with this. And um, my co-host said he, he's getting like the Gary V vibes with it. So I don't know. I'm, yeah, I'm looking to, to get one of those. That's interested. That's interesting his, to me. What's right his now. plan with that? Like, what is he doing with those exactly? He came out with a whole, um, like a whole uh, roadmap for it and stuff. Um, I mean, you know, he's, he's, he's trying to build out his own metaverse um, mm. in Decentraland and Sandbox. And um, yeah, he's going to come out with, you know, a bunch of other stuff, do like meetups. And I don't know, he has a whole roadmap. I, I haven't honestly haven't looked too much into it. Mm. Um, I probably should look into it more, but um, yeah, I think that's interesting. So it's, uh, yeah, it sounds interesting. And I am pr pretty familiar with, with him. Um, so it, yeah, it, it could have that sort of, sort of like V friends type of set up and like just take off yeah. one day like he, I, I, it bothers me when I look at v friends it's like especially the <laughs> I hesitate to even call it artwork but it's like the the drawings are just like what the hell is this but if like if a community has enough like fanboys and fangirls and stuff that it seems like they just buy into it but it seems like a lot of people are feel that way towards Gary V so um like even didn't he it's just a membership awesome? yeah yeah and they, keep Oh, go ahead. He just auctioned like three, sorry, five of his NFTs or something for like over a million dollars. Did you see that? I didn't see that. No, it was, I think at New York, uh, is it so Sobeys or? Oh, so the bees. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, he got like just over a million for these for five of his original oh, wow. from that cool. series, which is crazy. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, he actually, uh, uh, collaborated with, uh, Jimmy, who is the founder of, um, Avastars, you know, about Avastars. No, what's that? Avastars were the first uh, generative projects to be fully on chain, actually. And I think that's a sleeper. I think that's a long term model. Uh, they came out in, I don't know, they took they took a year to sell out, actually, a year. Okay. And um, I have, I bought one for my mom for Christmas, actually. And I have uh, one for myself as well. I think the floor is like 0.1 or something. But anyway, um, uh, they, Jimmy collaborated with Gary V and he gave away, uh, several hundred to V friend holders, which is really cool. They're also doing a meetup in New York, um, uh, Avastar collaborating with, uh, Gary V and they, you know, sold tickets. There's like 125 tickets mm. available, um, for that. So yeah, anyway, that's, an, that's another good, and that one actually, um, has been out for, for several years. So that's a good, good, you know, it's been through, it was, you know, basically born in like the winter of uh -huh. nfts you know and so it's it's been through it's been through some times and um just feel like that's a really cool project a lot of ogs in the space hold on the, on to that and jimmy himself is an og in the space so it's like you know you're kind of betting on the team you're betting on the people um behind it you gotta have a lot of patience with some of those though like mm -hmm. to, to hold them that long and not really see them move like yep yeah yep. yeah even the um the the house of house of Kiba, is it Kiba. 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 Yeah, even that yeah. one is just like I just watching it. I was like, wow, this seems to be moving so slow. But it just has that impression on on the like the front end of things is what you're saying, like the lack of marketing and teasers and stuff versus the the BYO pills. People are just like just dropping clips constantly <laughs> of these random, you know, AR. They're things. doing such a good job. I'm so proud of them because um yeah, I remember I I missed the mint because they're from another country and they did it super early and I was sleeping and huh. um. So I, but I really wanted them because I thought they looked so quality and um, I think they're like points are right to mint. And I ended up buying um, several on the secondary for like basically mint price. And I was just rooting for them and they, they didn't, you know, talk about a sleeper. They didn't budge for months. Mm -hmm. The price didn't budge for months. The price was sitting at mint price basically for months. And so um, it wasn't until they kind of, you know, um, came out with that access key that you could claim for free if you had one that it started kind of pumping up a bit. And then you know, everyone's kind of like, what are they doing? You know, they're not doing anything, but it's like they're working hard behind the scenes. And then, um, you know, now they start coming out with these apostle teasers and you know, the apostles look awesome. 
Um, and so, yeah, it, you know, it's like, it's like, yeah, you know, they're not always, projects aren't always going to be 24 seven, you know, putting things out there, but it's like kind of, um, you know, it's the whole buy low, sell high, right? You kind of have to try to recognize those hidden gems that are, you know, kind of sleepers right now, but you feel like they have potential to really pop. And that's what I try to do. Yeah, I try yeah. To find. That, that's the sense I got from like listening to your podcast and just checking out your, your Twitter real quick is like just knowing that you put in that effort to like look into these things and you're not just like buying up random projects or like shilling out random projects like you're actually like you care about the community and you're like a part of the Definitely. community in that way so there's just a lot of people that don't seem to have that passion um but that, that's why I just thought you'd be like an awesome person to have you know chat about Thank this you. stuff mm-hmm. on this podcast because just just because you, you can tell like it that you exude that passion for NFTs and it's just pretty cool in that way. Um, so we're actually uh, running up to about almost an hour now, but it's been really cool talking with you about the stuff. I'd love to do it again, like get an update sometime. Um, but did you have any uh, closing thoughts on, on anything you want to share for anyone? I am going to put like all your links in the description of this uh, episode. So it's going to have like your podcast links and your social. So if you want to drop some of those for people that are just listening and too lazy to click for the description, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, sure. but yeah, any closing thoughts or, or anything you want to just like drop or anything? I mean, you know, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter if you need help. I Sometimes I get messages and people are like, I'm too embarrassed to ask people about this. But like, you know, here's my like dumb new newbie question. And I'm like, you know, no question is dumb. Like, yeah, ask away. And so if you have any kind of, you know, beginner questions that you feel like are dumb and you're like embarrassed to tweet about or something, feel free to, you know, shoot me a DM. I'm always, you know, happy to help when I can. Uh, on Twitter, my username is Jennifer underscore pseudo, S-U-T-T-O. And then, yeah, I mean, if you want to check out my podcast, it's called the NFT Catcher Podcast. We post weekly about uh, NFT projects. It is a little bit more um, for someone that it's a little bit more advanced. Like it's not for if you like never heard of NFTs, but sometimes it's good to familiarize yourself with the language, you know, even just to kind of, you're like, what Mm -hmm. is happening? I don't know what they're talking about, but I'm getting familiar that, you know, so yeah, I guess if you're a beginner too, why not, you know, give it a listen. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's pretty much it. And then, you know, if you want to uh, check on your portfolio value of, you know, certain NFTs that we support, check out the company I work for, evaluate.market. Um, we support over 18 different NFTs. Um, so yeah, <laughs> thanks for having Very me. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for coming on. And, and again, we should, we should do another chat sometimes. It was just super fun talking about this stuff and um, th- yeah. yeah, thanks for taking the time to, to sort of enlighten people that are, are newbies, but there are probably some like people that have been in NFTs that are listening and they're just like, finally, they found a podcast, like your podcast that they can listen to that where people talk about this stuff. Cause that's, that, that's where I was at. It's like, no one's talking about this, like why it's so popular on, on Twitter. So yeah, anyways, but thanks again. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll chat soon. All right.